Hi, this is Teacher Liz. We shall continue our discussion about electromagnetic waves. Sa lesson na to, aalamin natin ano ba ang electromagnetic theory at sino-sinong scientist ang involved sa theory na to. Still under the same most essential learning competency, our lesson is about the proponents of electromagnetic theory. We have the following objectives. First is to trace the development of the electromagnetic theory. Second is to discuss the basic principles of electromagnetic theory. And third is to explain some applications of electromagnetic theory. Gaya ng nakasanayan, we shall have our pre-test first. Agree or disagree? We have five items with a 10-second pause in between. Let us start. Electricity and magnetism are separate phenomena. 10 second pause. A changing electric field produces a magnetic field. Pause. An electric field results from a static magnetic field. Pause. EM waves are transverse waves. Pause. Finally, light is composed of changing electric and magnetic fields. Pause. Okay. Babalikan natin ang inyong mga sagot mamaya pagkatapos ng video. Moving on, let's consider the following pictures. Noong unang panahon, itinuturing ng magkaibang fenomena ang electricity and magnetism. Wala pang nakaisip ng koneksyon nila sa isa't isa. Hanggang noong 19th century na siyang itinuturing na revolutionary period ng scientific discoveries and inventions. Pero paano nga ba natuklasan ng ating mga scientists ang relationship ng electricity and magnetism? Can we combine them? Yan ang aalamin natin sa lesson na to. Narito ang mga questions na kailangan natin i-consider. And you may write this down in your notebooks para sagutan ninyo as you go along with this video. First question, who were the scientists that contributed to the formulation of EM theory? Second, what are the basic principles of EM theory? And third, what are some applications of EM theory? Okay, for our first question, sino-sino ba ang mga scientists na nag-contribute to the formulation of EM theory? Actually, a lot of scientists have contributed to this theory, but we shall focus our discussion with these five people with very important contributions. Gaano ka important? We will find out. First is Orsted. Taong 1820, si Hans Christian Oersted, isang physicist mula sa Denmark, ang nagpasimula ng pagtuklas ng relationship ng electricity and magnetism. Nagre-lecture siya noon sa klase at nag-set up siya ng wire na may kuryente to demonstrate the heating effect of current. Pero, aksidente niyang nailapit yung compass sa wire at napansin niya na nag-twitch o gumalaw yung needle when the wire is connected to the battery. Since gawa sa magnet ang needle ng compass, napansin niya na may magnetic effect ang electric current. And he concluded that an electric current can create a magnetic field. Medyo groundbreaking itong discovery ni Orsted dahil no one ever thought na may connection ang electricity and magnetism until his discovery. Ito ang nagsilbing mitya para mag-conduct ng sariling eksperiment ang ibang scientist para ma-establish ang relationship 
ng electricity and magnetism. So, that's Orsted, and he discovered that a moving charge creates a magnetic field. Let's go to Ampere. Mabilis na nakarating kay French physicist Andre Marie Ampere ang natuklasan ni Orsted at nagpa siyang magsagawa rin ng sariling eksperimento. Sa isa sa kanyang experimental setups, gumamit siya ng dalawang magkatabing wires. Pinadalo niya ang kuryente sa parehong direksyon sa mga wires na ito at nagkaroon ng atraksyon ang dalawa. Kapag opposite naman ang direction ng current, nagkaroon ng repulsion ang dalawang wires. Imagine na walang magnet sa setup na ito, pero nagkaroon ng attraction and repulsion of wires by running current through the wires and changing its direction. He had produced a magnetic attraction and repulsion without the use of any magnets. All of it was generated by electricity. He termed this new era of exploration electrodynamics. But nowadays, ang electrodynamics at electromagnetism are treated as one and the same. So that's Ampere, who discovered that magnetism can be produced by electricity in support of Orsted's discovery. Next, we have Faraday. If magnetism may be produced by electricity, as what Orsted and Ampere find out, could the reverse be possible? Posible kayang makapag-produce ng electricity from magnetism? Ito ang tanong na naglaro sa isip ni Michael Faraday, isang bookbinder turned physicist galing London. Noong 1831, Nag-set up si Faraday ng magnet at isang solenoid na binubuo ng wire na inikot o coil of wire sa isang hollow metal tube. Ang wire na ito ay nakakabit sa galvanometer para madetect ang presence ng current. Nung sinubukan ni Faraday na i-insert ang magnet sa loob ng tube, gumalaw ang needle ng galvanometer and current was detected. Ngunit nung nasa loob na ito ng tube, bumalik sa zero ang reading ng galvanometer. Pagkalabas ng magnet, gumala ulit yung needle at nadetect ang current. Note na kapag nasa loob na yung magnet at nakahinto ito momentarily, zero ang reading ng galvanometer. Ibig sabihin, walang current kapag nakastop ang magnet. Faraday observed, that current is detected only when the magnet is moving in and out of the coil. Therefore, he concluded that a changing magnetic field produces an electric current, which is the reverse of Orsted and Ampere's discovery. Faraday called it electromagnetic induction. Little did Faraday know na sa kabilang dako ng mundo, sa Amerika, at sa parehong taon, 1831, itong si Joseph Henry, isang American scientist, ay nakapagsagawa rin ng mga experiments about electromagnetic induction using electromagnets. Kaya nga lang, kinailangan niyang ipospone ang pag-experiment hanggang June 1832. Naunang makapag-publish ng papel si Faraday, kaya sa kanya napunta ang credit. And Faraday was regarded as the father of electromagnetic induction. That was Faraday who discovered that a changing magnetic field produces an electric current. Now we go to Maxwell. Ang pagkatuklas ni na Orsted at Faraday sa relationship ng electricity and magnetism ang siyang naging basehan ng Scottish physicist na si James Clerk Maxwell para pag-aralan kung pwedeng pagsamahin ng dalawa into one unified theory. 
Noong 1864, tinranslate ni Maxwell ang findings ni Faraday into mathematical equations at dinevelop niya ang tinatawag na electromagnetic theory. While Faraday had discovered that a changing magnetic field produces an electric field, Maxwell added the converse. A changing electric field produces a magnetic field even in the absence of electric currents. Ibig sabihin, hindi kailangan na may electric charge o electric current para makapagpropagate ang electromagnetic wave base sa theory ni Maxwell. With this, Maxwell predicted the existence of electromagnetic waves. He also hypothesized that EM waves travel at the speed of light and that light is a form of electromagnetic wave. Kaya lang, may isang problema si Maxwell. Hindi niya alam kung paano niya ikakandak ang eksperiment na magpapatunay na nakakapag-travel o nakakapag-propagate ang EM wave. Yes, he presented the mathematical explanation about it, but detecting electromagnetic waves is another story. This is something that was answered by our next and final scientist featured today. And that is Hertz. Thanks to Heinrich Hertz, a German physicist who verified the existence of electromagnetic waves traveling at the speed of light in 1887, o mahigit dalawang dekada mula nang naisulat ang theory ni Maxwell. Tignan natin ang kanyang setup. Heinrich equipment was a simple spark generator. This is a very high voltage generator coupled to an antenna and a metallic ring at some distance apart. Kung tama si Maxwell, sabi ni Heinrich, yung electromagnetic waves na magigenerate dito sa antenna ay magta-travel papunta sa metallic ring gap na magkukos ng spark. When the generator was turned on, voila! A spark was seen in the metallic ring gap. Electromagnetic waves traveled from the antenna to the metallic ring gap, causing a spark. Maxwell was right. Maxwell must have been celebrating in his grave because he died in 1879, eight years ago before Hertz experiment. What Hertz generated in his apparatus was radio waves, a form of electromagnetic waves providing evidence to Maxwell's electromagnetic theory. And now, these are the scientists that contributed to the development of electromagnetic theory. We now go to our next question. Ano ba ang mga basic principles ng electromagnetic theory? Una, many natural phenomena exhibit wave-like behavior. So, we have water waves, electric Una, many natural phenomena exhibit wave-like behavior. We have water waves, earthquake waves, and sound waves that require a medium to propagate. These are examples of mechanical waves. Second, light can also be described as a wave. A wave of changing electric and magnetic fields that propagate outward from their source. These waves do not require a medium to propagate. The third one is that EM waves travel at 3 times 10 raised to 8 meters per second through a vacuum. Fourth principle, EM waves are transverse waves. The changing electric field and magnetic field oscillate perpendicular to each other into the direction of the propagating waves. And fifth, when an oscillating charge accelerates, ibig sabihin kapag nagbago ang kanyang velocity, its electric field changes too. Finally, our question number three. What are some applications of electromagnetic theory? We can find enormous practical applications of electromagnetism in everyday life. 
from domestic appliances to research applications. In households, industry, transportation, communication, medical field, even in space technology, the applications of electromagnetism seem endless. We will get to know more about these in Module 2. So here's the question for your reflection log. How did electromagnetic theory result in the advancement of modern technology? Take a three-minute pause and answer this question in your science notebook. And now we are down to our posters. Fill in the following graphic organizer. Include the important discoveries and contributions of these scientists to the development of electromagnetic theory. Write them down in your science notebook. And finally, let's revisit your pretest. And that ends our lesson two. Up next, lesson three, wavelengths and frequencies of electromagnetic waves. See you in our next video.